We are now joined on stage by the Bush Light Pole Award winner for tomorrow's South Point 400, and that's Christopher Bell, driver of the number 20 Ream Smurfit Cap at Toyota. The four, you got, Christopher, you got the 499th pole for Toyota and any NASCAR series, and then also your sixth pole of the year, their sixth pole of the playoffs. Big day for you and Toyota. Walk us through that. Yeah, setting up somebody for a grand 500, <laughs> but... Yeah, it, it's it's really cool. You know, qualifying has been so much fun, um, really since the introduction of the next gen car uh, on the intermediate stuff, because it's just right on the verge of of uh, holding your holding your foot down, going wide open, uh, and uh, it, it yeah, it's right on the edge, and that's what I live for. Good deal. If we have a question for Christopher, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start in the back. John the field, the racing experts. You know, you lead all drivers in poles in the Gen 7 era. What do you think fits with your driving style? Uh, I mean, I, I would say that it's more so um, my team giving me what I need qualifying. And we really, we, we've, we've done really well. And, and, you know, Toyota came out with a, a different body at the start of 2023. And we kind of lost the handle of on our qualifying balance at the beginning of the year. Um, but then really you know, June, July, that mid season, uh, we were able to pick back up on it and, and, and we've been qualifying really well ever since. So, you know, my engineers, my crew chief, they do a great job of getting my balance close. And whenever my balance close, I feel confident enough to, uh, drive the car as hard as I can. Come up front, the Bob and then the Zach. Bob Parkhurst, Fox Sports. There were some drivers who had tire issues. I'm curious if you ha came close to having any and do you have confidence in tires and where you guys are at for tomorrow? Uh, I have no idea, Bob. It certainly is uh, alarming, you know, whenever you see the the nine car blow a tire, the five had that issue that they showed on TV. Uh, but as far as I know, our camp was all good. So, you know, I, I, I was trusting them that we weren't going to have any issues. Um, you know, one thing going back to that last question. So you said the Gen 7 era. I never qualified in the Gen 6 era. So like whenever I came to the Cup Series in 2020, we were in COVID protocol. So we didn't qualify in 2020 or 2021. So um, yeah, that, that's a, a, an asterisk next to those races that I competed in and didn't qualify. How many polls would you have gotten in the Gen 6 era? <laughs> that, that's a good question, Bob. <laughs> we'll go to Zach and then to Justin. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Uh, Christopher, uh, with four Toyotas left in this round of eight, what kind of advantage is that for the manufacturer where you guys are typically outnumbered in a, in a lot of different ways to now have kind of be, be a step up above uh, where the others stand right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it really matters with the style of racing that we've got coming up um, at Vegas, Miami, and, and Martinsville. But with that being said, I think it's a, it's a showcase for how good the Toyotas are right now. And, the you know, we've got really good drivers in them too. Tyler Reddick. Denny, Martin are, are no slouches, and uh, this is we're, we're in a good good place, um, you know. With William and and I think Denny and Martin have good points, but William has a lot of points, so uh, it's going to be tough to get all four of them in the final four. But um, hopefully, you know, we can do our best and and get as many as we can in. Uh, I mean, I think everything in your, you know, your career, your life will help you further on down the road. So certainly making the final four is, is more of a, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be a big help if I make, get back there. And, and, you know, I know that, uh, from last year, I, my first or my round of eight didn't go well. Cause I wrecked out here and didn't have a great Miami. Uh, and then I still was able to win at, my, at Martinsville. So that, you know, will be in the back of my head that, you know, it, it, it can be done all the way to the last minute. And, you know, even on the flip side, I know uh, like Denny Hamlin was in on points at Martinsville all the way until the last corner. So uh, fortunately for me, it, it worked the other way where I was out and then I was in at the very end. But you're never safe until that checkered flag falls at uh, Martinsville. OK, we're going to go to Justin, then to Jerry, then to Adam and then the gentleman way on the right. Uh, Justin Schuler kicking the tires. So you're kind of alluding to it. Do you just not worry about points now and just focus on the wins? Yeah, I mean, the round of eight, it's, it's, if you're going to make the final four, you're going to have to be uh, racing for wins and winning races. So, you know, it, it, 
that you're you're taking your take your points day or whatever is kind of gone at this point. So um, you know tomorrow we need to go out there and try and win the race. And if that uh, if if it ends in a win, then we're transferred. And if it doesn't end in a win, then you're looking at a solid points day no matter what. So um, but you know that that running eighth, tenth, whatever your good points day is is not going to get you there. You're going to have to have a, a you know competing for a win and and then a great points day. Is that because that's just the nature of the round of eight, or is that more just because after the reset, you're looking at the points, and this is like probably one of the closest historically that we've seen the round of eight drivers be being spread by only thir uh, 30 points? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure William and Martin and Denny, they may be looking at it differently than what I am because I'm, I'm below the cut line. But, you know, like you said, it, it, it is a, it's a small uh, gap between all of us, so um, it really is up for grabs. And, you know, tomorrow will, after tomorrow, it'll, we'll understand the picture a little bit more if we have a round of eight winner, if we don't have a round of eight winner, how the other, how many points the other guys score. Uh, and it, it changes, you know, year to year, round to round. Like some rounds, if everybody scores really good points, uh, then, then you're, you know, you have to win if you start below the cut line. But if guys don't score points, then it's completely different. So, uh, you know, you, you learn more every, every race you go by. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. And you joked about the setting somebody up for the 500 when uh, it's a poll for Toyota, but you were second, I think, starting position last year at Homestead. So it could be you. What would that mean if you got the 500? Yeah, it would be cool. Um, that, I mean, I'm glad that we're qualifying well, but I want to start being up here on Sundays instead of Saturdays. Uh, but yeah, it, it would, it would be awesome. And, and, um, you know, qualifying well is, is a help every single week, but it's not a guarantee. And, uh, you know, I want to I want to come in here on Sundays. That in mind, how strong do you feel about yourself being a a contender for this championship? As far as being, you know, whether front runner or favorite or fan favorite or or just emotional favorite for you, what are your thoughts going into these final races? Well, I, I definitely know I'm not the fan favorite, but uh, um, you know, I, and honestly, I don't. I, we're not we're not a favorite in any category right now because we haven't been running well enough to do it. But I know that we're capable of uh, we're capable of, of performing like a favorite if we put it all together. And um, you know we're, we're close. We hit on it at times, and then other times we're we're not close. So uh, we've got three races here, and fortunately we're in the round. So um, I'm, I'm excited to give it my all. But uh, I understand that we're not the favorite, and and I know that we are capable of of doing it and performing like we need to to be a champion uh, if it all comes together. We're going to go to Adam, then to Trey, and then over to Tom. Uh, Adam Carabine, RacingRefresh.com. Um, your car obviously is great today. You got the pole. Uh, tomorrow the conditions are expected to be a lot hotter. How does that look for you tomorrow? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I, it looks as good as anybody. And certainly the track conditions are going to be a lot different. It was crazy. The eclipse, you know, how much colder it made it in, in the track was super fast today because of the cold, colder temperatures. So, um, it's going to be slicker tomorrow, which I'm okay with. And hopefully put a little bit more rubber down. The track's going to widen out. And, uh, you know, this is a place where if you're faster than the guys in front of you, you can typically pass them because you can move around, you can run the top, you can run the bottom, create momentum on guys. And the same can be said if you're bad, you know, if you're bad, you're not going to hold them off because they'll drive right by you. And uh, I was also going to ask just about this playoff round. We are basically at crunch time now. Um, how important is it to just not make mistakes in this round? And is there a danger in kind of trying to focus on mitigating mistakes rather than going for the wins? Yeah, I mean, if you if you make a mistake, you're pretty much done. So uh, it it is what it is at that point. But you know, you're, you're going to have to put it all on the line and, and try and you know go for the wins. So. Uh, if you go for a win and you crash out, then you know your 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 playoffs pretty much over. But if you don't go for the win and you run tenth, your playoffs pretty much over too. So, uh, yeah, it, it you're gonna have to be competing for wins and not worried about that. Go next to Trey. Uh, hey, Christopher Trey Campbell from uh, Sports Talk 790. Uh, can you see me? I got you now. Dope. All right, cool. Um, so obviously qualifying is very important with these cars. Do you think it'll be similar to what we saw in the spring and that it'll be hard to pass like it was? 
Yeah, so that's a great question. And, you know, the spring Vegas race was completely different than what we've seen the last couple of Vegas races with this car. And I think a lot of that was due to the ambient conditions being overcast, cold, uh, and, and we didn't lay a lot of rubber down. So I, I think that that's going to be the outcast. And then tomorrow will be a little bit more of a normal Las Vegas race where passing is easier. Uh, but yeah, certainly the, the spring race was, was different. And, and I think that that was due to it being colder ambient conditions and no sun. The qualifying um, trim that you have here at Vegas, considering Homestead next week will also be a mile and a half, does anything kind of help translate for next week or is it a whole different ball game? Um, I, man, it, the only thing that's this, that's the same between Vegas and Homestead is the, the track length. Vegas has a ton of grip, probably the, mo the highest grip intermediate that we go to. And uh, Homestead is the lowest grip intermediate that we go to. So, um, you know, I, I don't think anything will translate from this week to next week. Okay, we're going to go to Tom, and then we'll wrap with Justin. Tom Zaleski on County Today. Hey, Chris, um, you, you're not considering yourself the favorite now. But Logano won here a year ago and ended up winning the whole, th winning at Phoenix and winning the whole thing. Do you, will you at least increase your belief that you can be a favorite if you win here tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I say that I'm not the favorite, but that's just the, the, you know, the general population or whatever. But uh, I know that if we if we do our jobs, if we do what we're capable of then there's no reason why the 20 car can't be a champion and, and certainly win tomorrow and win at Phoenix and win at Miami and Martinsville too. So, um, you know, I know that we have everything that we need to, to go out there and do it, and it, it's a matter of, of putting it together. So, um, yes, I, I do think that we are capable of winning tomorrow, and I think that we're capable of winning every race from between now and, and Phoenix. Justin? Um, real quick, just going back to last week, um, have you and Suarez been able to talk yet and um, maybe just kind of talk a little bit because you're going to be racing a lot more non-playoff drivers. How important is it to not make enemies these next three weeks as well? Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to, uh, you know, try and have uh, as many guys race you clean as you can, um, you know, and, and I, I made a mistake last last week at Charlotte. I got into Daniel and, and um, you know, unfortunately ruined his race. Uh, I reached out to him and, and apologized and told him that it wasn't my intentions to wreck him. And, uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that he's upset. He has a right to be upset and you know, it'll, it is what it is. Christopher, congratulations again on winning the poll and then good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Yep. Take care.